Ubuntu and GNOME both drop support for Xorg, for the Xorg open source X11 implementation, following the announcement, immediately following the announcement of a fork to continue the development of Xorg, which Red Hat has been trying to kill for years. This is a very, very peculiar and fascinating story to follow. And I wanna I lay out a couple of the timelines uh, here so that you can kind of see exactly what's happening and make up your own mind. Okay, so here's, here's the timeline. On June 5th, the Lunduk Journal broke the story that Xorg was being forked. And the, the basic summary of that is thus. For years, the Xorg team, the Xorg uh, community council people, which is predominantly kind of run by Red Hat, uh, as well as a sprinkling of, of, of others around the open source world and is hosted at Free Desktop, which is also heavily driven by Red Hat, uh, has been kind of trying to kill off Xorg, the de facto X Windows display server across all Linux machines for, for, for decades now. Uh, so much so that there were <laughs> over or roughly 3,000 commits or merge requests of code waiting to be released. And they just simply, the XOR team just does not want them released. So it, it, it gets so extreme that people who were advocating for bug fixes and security patches and, and, and features and security improvements to XORG have been told that they are crazy if they think there's going to be any future updates to XORG. So XORG got forked because that's what you do when someone tries to kill a project, right? So I, I unveiled to the world that this was happening on June 5th. That cat's out of the bag now. Uh, everyone's starting to talk about it. Fantastic. Three days later, let me see if I've got this here. <clears throat> Three days later on June 8th, it was announced that GNOME was going to be officially dropping support for Xorg, like right away, right? So, so it, and in the days between, between June 5th and June 8th, Red Hat did everything in their power to try and silence this. They deleted the repository of the fork. They started mass closing uh, the, a backlog of hundreds, if not thousands of merge requests that were sitting in the backlog for Xorg. They just closed them off completely. Those, were, those weren't for the fork, by the way. Those were for Xorg proper. Um, they also uh, banned the user. <laughs> <laughs> or the developer of the Xorg fork from uh, being involved in, in, in Xorg or free desktop or anything, despite the fact that he was one of the most prolific developers they had at that point, uh, right? So they were, they were doing everything they could to just try and silence this project, to suppress this project, right? And three days after news of the project came out, GNOME then announced that they were just dropping XORG completely. So uh, uh, the X11 session, this is from blog.gnomes.org on June 8th. The X11 session for GNOME for version 49 will be disabled by default and it's scheduled for removal either during this development cycle or more likely during the next one by GNOME 50. So it's going to be just gone completely. As a side note, they also end, because it's GNOME after all, and you can never pass up a good opportunity to, to virtue signal in a contradictory and bizarre way. Uh, at the end, they end this announcement by declaring, happy Pride Month and free Palestine fist emoji. <laughs> I feel like I don't need to point out to them that if you're celebrating Pride Month in 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 Gaza, you're probably not making it out alive because go the government of Gaza would kill you because it's officially illegal to celebrate. Pride. Anyway, I digress <clears throat> because it's gnome and, and they don't they don't know what the heck's going on. They don't know their uh, uh, from their elbow. Uh, but they announced that okay, X11 X Org gone, no longer going to be a thing in gnome going forward. Two days later. On, uh, uh, what is this, on June uh, 10th, Ubuntu came out and declared that in this very next release of Ubuntu, version 25.10, the version that comes out this October, boom, gone. No more support for, for Xorg in their default desktop environments, which are all GNOME based, right? They're just giving them the boot. Now, all this is happening quickly. Now, a lot of, a lot of you watching along and listening along at home will think, well, but aren't aren't some of these projects trying to get rid of Xorg? 
Isn't that a thing they've been doing for, for years now? And the answer is yes, they, absolutely. Gnome, Ubuntu, Red Hat especially. These companies and organizations have been trying to kill Xorg for years and years. It, it, it's been an ongoing thing, and it's it's kind of wild because not only do they not want to develop it themselves and not want to support it they are actively engaged in trying to silence people who have been talking about it and it's 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 absolutely fascinating um let me see if i've got something here yes so i had lots of questions about everything that's been going on i've been asking everyone i've been asking gnome i've been asking ubuntu i've been asking red hat and xorg and free desktop and i haven't been getting any satisfactory responses however the developer behind the app image file format, right? So app images over on over on the Linux side of things, a nice little uh, self-contained bundled applications, right? It's a nice, easy way for developers to ship an application as a single file across a variety of Linux distributions. Their app images are fantastic in that way. The developer behind that had questions himself. So he went over to the uh, X org and free desktop bug tracking systems and really just asked a very simple question. Uh, please give a technical justification. This is what he said here for why they were closed in the respective threads of the, each of these merge requests. So explain why merge requests were closed. Real simple, because man, did they close a heck of a lot of them. And, and then, and uh, God bless him, the developer behind App Image just listed out a bunch of them. I, I don't even think he listed out all of them, just a bunch of them, because there's so many merge requests and they were all closed by Red Hat, right? These were these were Red Hat employee, a Red Hat employee specifically working at Red Hat, I believe on Red Hat time, doing this on behalf of Red Hat, as far as I could tell, right? So all these were getting closed out. So why were these closed? It's, it's fascinating. He got a response. The response, in my opinion, opened up more questions than, than it provided answers. So this was from the freedesktop.org code of conduct committee. And before I read this, I want to say something rather strange here. And th this is this is peculiar. If you try to reach out to the free desktop project, the primary points of conduct or primary points of contact are their code of conduct committee. And they list out their, their email addresses for all the people on their code of conduct committee, but there's really not other good ways to communicate with them. And it appears as though no matter who, what kind of question you ask, in, because this in this case, the app image developer was asking for a technical justification for closing specific bugs, but he got a response from the code of conduct committee. So it's fascinating. So that means that the free desktop project is really run by the code of conduct committee, which is primarily run by Red Hat. It, this is all important stuff to understand. So this is what the code of conduct committee said, quote, the author has been banned after a decision from the free desktop code of conduct committee. Closing the merge request was not a direct action, but an indirect consequence of deleting the forked re repository. GitLab closes related merge requests when a repository is deleted. End quote. Couple issues there. First, um, they're being very, very non-transparent about why exactly a decision was made by a code of conduct committee to ban someone for what seems to be the sin of forking open source software that no, that they themselves don't want to continue development of, right? So free desktop and Xorg do not want to continue development of Xorg. They don't like Xorg. They, they like Wayland. They want to make sure Xorg dies. Someone else forks Xorg so they, they consider that a code of conduct violation and ban that person? Bizarre. And the fact that they're refusing to provide any sort of information about that is absolutely fascinating. In fact, uh, someone asked as a follow-up question, does the committee ha has a secretary and keep logs of meetings? Because it sure would be interesting to see those logs, <laughs> to see why these decisions were made. It's also worth pointing out that all of the merge requests that were closed were not merge requests that were opened 
of the forked project. They were merge requests of the X org project themselves, which means all of those requests, which in some cases go back more than a year. A lot of them were from 2024 and 2023. I mean, there's thousands of them. Uh, they were being closed against Xorg, not the forked project. So the, the justification given here is not entirely accurate. <laughs> I'll just put it that way to say it nicely. And what we're seeing happening all, all around is, is people having a visceral reaction to all of this. We're seeing a lot of people who are like, Darn it, you are going to use Wayland. You are going to kill off Xorg. You are not allowed to use Xorg. You are not used, allowed to use an X11 or X Windows or X Displace or none of it. You will use Wayland and you will like it. But then other people still are like, the hell I will. <laughs> I'm going to use what I want. And, and here's my personal thoughts on all that. I, I have no um, personal passion of whether or not Xorg or Wayland is your display server of choice. I couldn't care less if you what display server you or anyone else chooses to use on their open source, predominantly and free software desktop. I just don't care. Um, but I like having choice and I, and I don't see a reason to suppress open source projects. Likewise, from a purely uh, use case and, and, and technical perspective, there are a vast number of reasons why someone would choose to use uh, Xorg or a fork of Xorg like Xlibre instead of Wayland. Uh, we're talking accessibility use cases, uh, application compatibility use cases, performance use cases. There's a huge number of reasons that I prefer Xorg currently over Wayland. That doesn't mean that, you know, some years down the line, I won't go, well, you know what, uh, the, the times have changed, Wayland's improved, now I'll use Wayland instead. It's a good piece of software. Either way, I don't, I don't have bad feelings against either of these pieces of software. But I find it incredibly strange, to a fascinating degree, how the advocates and proponents of Wayland, uh, Ubuntu, GNOME, Red Hat especially, the Free Desktop Project, are so passionate that not only should you use Wayland, but you shouldn't even talk about Xorg. You shouldn't contribute patches to Xorg. You shouldn't even be allowed to fork Xorg. It's fascinating. And while many of these projects have been working to migrate in some fashion or another away from Xorg and towards Wayland over the last several years, the fact that they've all decided to do it within hours of a, a, the first viable fork of Xorg being announced by developers who know how to develop on it and have been around long enough that it has actually some real chance at success. The moment that happens and the moment it seems like there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel for Xorg, for X11 in the open source and Linux world, the moment that happens, boom. Boom, they, they, they rally the troops and say, fine, we won't ship it at all. It's done. Uh, we're dropping support entirely. They chose that very moment. The odds of that being the exact moment over the course of years when they could have done this. They could have done it last month. They could have done it last year, five years ago. They could have done it next year, next summer. They could have done it a few weeks from now. But no, they chose this exact second to do it. It's extremely telling. And uh, I, I find it absolutely fascinating. Now, you might be sitting at home and going, well, it's a coincidence. It's a coincidence that uh, within days of it being announced that this was happening and Red Hat working tirelessly to censor and squash this project that Ubuntu rallies the troops and drops Xorg and Gnome rallies the troops and drops Xorg all as one big collective team, almost in lockstep. You may think, oh, that's a coincidence. I don't see a coincidence here. That's too many coincidences all at once. It's just not likely. These are related. Uh, I wanna thank all the Lunduke Journal subscribers for allowing me to do this sort of coverage uh, because someone, gosh darn it, has gotta do it. Go to lunduke.com and click on all of those links. They're the best links on the whole internet. You'll love those links so much. So go to lunduke.com and thank you to all the subscribers for making the Lunduke Journal possible and keeping the Lunduke Journal free of ads, 
free of big tech influence, and heck, even free of influence from the open source foundations. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare and broadcast.